So we're going to start uh, in Romania. Romania, of course, is a Roman name. I don't know if you knew that the Romans were there, but indeed they were from way back. Um, the word Romania, the name Romania, comes from the Latin meaning a citizen of Rome. So I thank people who contributed to this and Mr. Google who contributed a few things as well. Uh, oh, we can't see. Hmm. I'm going to see this. Uh, there, okay. Here's a map, an old map of Europe, but you have an idea of where Romania is nestled among Moldova and Ukraine and uh, Hungary and the former Yugoslavia, which of course now is seven countries and Bulgaria. But it's down there in uh, Central Europe, South Central Europe. And it wasn't Romania for a long time, but actually not until 1859, it was a, uh, overrun by various other countries, which we talk a little bit about as we go along. Oh, and Edward, I forgot about you too, um, being up in this corner. All of Romania is this area up in, in the upper right corner. And what we're looking at is this area right here, this uh, part in the middle, which is called Transylvania, which literally is across the mountains or um, past the mountains. So our trip started in Bucharest over here, but it included all these other things. We went up from Bucharest uh, in, on our way to Brasov, to uh, Pelish Castle, Bron Castle, and then on to our host city, which was Sibiu. Our main reason for stopping in Brasov was that we had friends there because they came here first. And so we uh, were able to meet with them before we went on to Sibiu and took a bunch of side trips out of Sibiu. So as I said, the, ro the word Romania is, comes from the word Roman, uh, Ro Roman or citizen of Rome. You see several languages that uh, look almost like English. Uh, you may not be aware that the that ro uh, Romanian language is one of the five um, Roman languages or Latin languages, including uh, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Italian. So it does have some of those same roots that, that these other Romance languages have. In this middle picture is the Athenium, and across it you see the Athenium Roman, and a few scenes from Bucharest. Of course, the big thing to see in uh, Bucharest is the Nicolae Ceausescu Palace, which is now the, the Parliament building. It was built for Ceausescu as he was a, a communist dictator. And uh, he built this palace for himself and it defies imagination. So here are some of us that you will recognize, Marty and her friend Linda Doyle from Fort Worth and Brud Kistner who is no longer with us unfortunately along the side of it. There, we're not allowed to take pictures inside, but I do have a few off the internet that just give you some idea of how opulent this palace is. Uh, 480 chandeliers was just one of the little things that uh, are uh, involved in this, or one of the th things you can say about it. So just a few things about it. It was built for uh, Tuchescu, as I said. It was built on a hill that he leveled and, and moved um, 2.7 square miles of the old city center, just demolished it, wiped it out, moved 40,000 people. And, and it wasn't just people, and it was a nice neighborhood too, where, where you would want to live in the center of town. But also other old buildings were moved there. And in fact, some people were so concerned about these uh, buildings being moved, buildings being demolished that they moved some of them on rollers in order to save them from destruction. So this is an aerial view of the palace. You get an idea of how big it is from, from this view. And in fact, it uh, can be seen from, uh, from the moon and outer space, uh, our, our satellites. So this palace was built between 72 and 89 with forced labor. And the costs were estimated in 2006 at 3.4 billion, that's B with a billion one of the most extravagant buildings ever built. Uh, over almost 4 million square feet, uh, 12 stories tall with another eight underground, which is part of a nuclear 
uh, bunker in the uh, underground. Interestingly enough, the architect was a 28 year old woman who had 700 other architects working with her constructed over 13 years. They couldn't decide on a style, I guess, social realist and modernist neoclassical, <laughs> if there is such a thing, borrowed from several places. Very ornate, more than 3000 rooms still not finished and most of it's still empty. So right now it houses two houses of parliament and three museums one being the uh, Contemporary Art Museum, another the Museum of the Palace, and another about communist uh, regime. It's also an international conference center. Here's some other buildings, this Athenium that we saw earlier, the Bishop's Residence, which is of the Orthodox Church, which we'll see next. The Russian Orthodox, I mean, the, the Roman, Romanian Orthodox Church uh, would remind you of Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, they're all part of these Eastern Orthodox churches that broke off from Rome. And they're known for their icons, which we'll see some of. <clears throat> they're famous for the gold and gilt that you see on the right and uh, some of the, the uh, sort of stiff looking figures, painted figures, uh, also with the gilt. This is look at, from the palace looking down the street at the fountains that lead up to it, some of this area that was cleared off, and a few other sites from Bucharest. So we left Bucharest then to make our way to Pelish Castle. The little S under the S is um, pronounced as SH, so it would be Pelish Castle. <coughs> and this was built by King Carol of Romania. And King Carol was actually a German. He was the second son of a prince. He was related to the Bonapartes, a German officer. Uh, the, the Romanians were under the Ottoman Empire at that time, but they uh, had kicked out their old king and were looking for a new one. It's like, you know, uh, an ad uh, wanted, new king of Romania. <laughs> so they went looking for somebody and uh, shopped around for uh, and found Carl uh, in uh, Germany. And of course, at that time, Germany was not a unified country. It was all these little kingdoms. So there were lots of princes around. So he arrived in Romania in 1866. They adopted a constitution, kind of snubbing their nose at the Ottomans. Uh, again, then uh, proclaimed their independence and uh, he was proclaimed king of Romania. So he ruled 48 years longer than any of his uh, followers or predecessors. He uh, had one child who died early, so his brothers and their children then reigned after him. But he did do a lot of things. He helped Romania gain its independence and raise its pre prestige. And mainly, he built this beautiful, beautiful Pelish castle. Now, you may think the castle to see in Romania's bronze castle. We did see that, Dracula's castle. But the one really beautiful one is Pelish castle. It's built in uh, near Sinaia, the little town, uh, and was... Um, considered one of the, the, the prettiest castles in Europe. It was uh, up in the mountains, so it was a nice hunting lodge for the, the, the uh, royal family and a masterpiece of German, hunt, kind of a combination of hunting lodge, uh, uh, what, do you, what, what would you say, for um, uh, leisure time, you know, not, not too elegant, but are also decorated with fine pieces of art. So it's so, a so combination. So after King Michael, who was one of his descendants, uh, forced abdication in, in 1947, the, the communists seized it and it's now open to the public. So this is a side entrance to the castle and looking up from the front at the front with beautiful grounds, I say set high in the mountains with, with beautiful views everywhere. Um, nice and cool in the summertime, lots of statuary. And again, no pictures inside. So we're gonna see pictures from the internet but best I could do. So here is this um, royal casual, if you like, the, the armor, uh, the dining room to seat a few people for dinner for friends. A sitting room, not, not good quality pictures, I'm afraid, best I could do. And we had lunch in nearby Sinaya, which was sort of an interesting little restaurant. This uh, carving, wood carving was in the front hall and the menu has all kinds of game items and uh, mainly meat. We did have entertainment, some of the musicians played for us. And we saw some of the native crafts or the uh, local crafts on the wall. You see these plates, uh, painted plates all over Romania. 
They're very popular. And I'm especially interested as a folk dancer seeing some of the national dress and with uh, Mr. Bear on the wall. And in Sanaya, of course, there are several tourist shops. So we're coming up to our second castle, Braun Castle. And this was the uh, castle known to uh, known for Vlad Draculeste. Uh, Dracula means son of the dragon, which actually refers to his father, who was the son. He was the son of Dracul, which means dra dragon. Or he was named as Vlad Tepish, or Vlad the Impaler, because he was also known for being not very nice to people he had captured. So he was three times king at different times over the 1400s. Definitely known for his cruelty. And uh, so Bram Stoker picked up on this in his novel, Dracula. And of course, if you're in the area, they like to say that he lived there. He did live uh, mainly in another castle, but he did live at Braun uh, some of the time. So here we are coming up to the castle, a few of our people from our group who uh, were with us and enjoyed it. Now you'll see the difference between Pellish Castle, which is pretty ornate, and this being now 400 years later from the 18, late 1880s to um, the 1400s. And this is a lot sparser and, and plainer, as you see, none of this gold gilt stuff. Uh, we would have uh, not central heat, but we would have heat in the rooms with um, these stoves. Uh, but there are some beautiful carvings in it, and um, but, but pretty bare. This, this uh, over here would be one of the stoves that would be lit, the, the tiled stoves were in every, every room. It had an interior courtyard. Of course, this was built on top of a hill, as most castles were, for protection and for uh, to ward off invaders. And of course, invaders were a big, big issue through the six, six, 600 years or more of Romania's um, history because they weren't even a country until the 1800s. So uh, they were always uh, fortifying themselves, which you'll see with the churches in little towns, because there were always invaders coming through. The Huns or the Ottomans or the um, Habsburgs or somebody was always invading them. <clears throat> so there would be watchtowers and walls and moats. So after our visit to Braun Castle, we uh, headed off for Brasov to meet our friends who, had, who had, we had hosted in Dallas. We stayed in Poyana Brasov, which is a ski resort just across the border of Transylvania. Um, <clears throat> as we said, these, these Carpathian Mountains uh, surrounded Transylvania, the, the um, province right in the middle of, of uh, Romania, and there are all kinds of ski resorts. So if you live in Brasov, you're about 30 minutes from the ski slopes. This was other uh, was our view. Uh, Edit and Mar and Marius were my uh, guests when they were in Dallas. Edit uh, Edit was um, the head of the Rom the orphanages. If you remember the Romanian orphanages orphanages back in the nineties or so, and then they were split up and moved into group homes. Um, Marius uh, was an editor of the uh, of a newspaper in um, Brasov. And they had teenage children at the time who are now grown. We're still on Facebook together. Here we are at dinner with uh, some of our people from our group. If you recognize Ken and, and Peggy from now living in Denton, Teresa, Ken, uh, Ken Walker and Peggy Denton, uh, Teresa Wilkin, Edit, myself and, and uh, Marius. So this is Brashoff settled in the hills uh, around uh, the mountains around Brashoff. And it's a lovely um, medieval town and Bagarash Mountain, <clears throat> a pedestrian old town. And note the uh, date on this, 1547. So the uh, main square, the, the big square is uh, <clears throat> uh, full of the uh, old buildings. <clears throat> <clears throat> the church you see in the background is called the Black Church, though it's not entirely black. Uh, it's um, had some places that uh, some some uh, bricks replaced here and there, so it's more checkerboard now. Peggy and Ken particularly got a bang out of the um, brush off 
tagline, whatever you call it, probably the best city in the world. <laughs> so they wanted their picture made with that. They got a big bang out of that. Whoops, I think we missed one. Right, here's our main square. Looking from different directions. And some of the crafts that you can buy in Romania, we've seen a few as we are going along, like the plates and um, uh, some of the woven goods. These were actually uh, from uh, Sanaya, the uh, metalwork. So if you need a new sword, that's the place to get it. Uh, Romanian dolls with some of the native dress costumes that they're wearing. And coming then from Brasov to uh, Sibiu, which was our week's stay, was at Fagarash Citadel, a citadel being um, a fort. So it was built in 1310, but it was ex expanded a couple of times. It, it has a moat and five towers and now has a nice museum around it. Not in really good shape compared to some of the other fortified places that we saw. But typically what happens is that a church or a fort has walls with the apartments built along the inside wall so that when the invaders came roaring down, uh, everyone could get inside, you lock the door, you pull down the drawbridge over the moat, you brought your animals in and everyone was safe. That was the plan. So you were going to see the, quite a few of those. But you better behave yourself because there was a gallows in the courtyard. So here's kind of a picture of what one would look like. Here's another one, Harman. Uh, this would be called a fortified church. It was not only a citadel for uh, a fort, but it was also a church. So this one also had a moat. So the thing to see in Romania is fortified churches. There are lots of them, or fortifications of all kinds. This one's in pretty good shape. It still has walls around it, and the housing still looks pretty livable. You might even uh, be able to rent a room there. I'm not sure. <clears throat> So a lot of these uh, uh, rooms along the walls would also be for storage because you would be uh, waiting out uh, some kind of um, the people battling you from the outside. You would want to have enough food to get along. The cathedral there, St. Nikolai, also has a cemetery. And these would be Rome. Um, Greek Orthodox, uh, Greek Romanian Orthodox, I'm sorry. They do have their own uh, hierarchy of each, each of the countries. So Sibiu, our destination for the week, you'll also see signs in German because there was a large German population there as well as a uh, population from Hungary. The Western part was heavily settled by Hungarians. And quite a few Germans moved into, as craftsmen, into Sibiu and also as far as Brasov. Uh, probably almost a third Hungarian, a third German, a third Romanian. And this was one of the manhole covers in, in uh, Sibiu, which, and I've made a picture of it because it was the cultural capital of Europe in 2007, which I think they do every other year, or maybe it's every year, I'm not sure, but it's also called Her Ermenstad in, uh, in the, this one. Of course, we always start off with a welcome party. And uh, we have Kathy with her hosts, and I'm sorry that I don't know the names of all the hosts. I've gotten better about putting last names in now that I can't remember that far back. Also with a main pedestrian square. And the buildings in this square are Brokenthal right here, which you see as uh, is the, the town museum, the town hall, and the Catholic cathedral. So this is Brokenthal Museum, a nice uh, area. Uh, a um, nice museum of the town and seeing across from the uh, doorway to the town hall. So Sibiu's big square, as it's called, uh, started in 1411 as a market. And it is indeed the big square. Uh, and it's named this because there are also some other squares that are little squares or, or other names for them. Uh, you might notice that some of the, the windows look like eyes. They call this one the House of Five Eyes. <clears throat> so 
some more windows. I particularly like to take windows and doors. They're always unique. And there are also several different religions besides the Romanian, I'll get it right this time, Romanian Orthodox Church. There's an evangelical church. And this is the church with the very high tower that you can see all over town. It has these wonderful roof pattern design on it as well. So it seems like wherever you go, you see the, the steeple of the evangelical church. Uh, the Bridge of Lies uh, is the, the first in Romania that was a metal bridge, a steel bridge, and the, only the second in Europe. It crosses the strata, whoops, I didn't want to go that far, the strata Ognea, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, and links the lesser square to Hewitt Square. So again, we have some more little squares. So there's a street that runs underneath this bridge. And it's called the Bridge of Lies. And you might ask why. And there are, of course, lots of legends of why it would be called the Bridge of Lies. One is that if you told a lie on the bridge, the bridge would collapse. Well, being a steel bridge, unlikely. And there are other ones too, you know, if your girlfriend lied to you, et cetera, et cetera. So there are all kinds, depending on who you ask, what the legend is about why it's called the Bridge of Lies. So the bridge then uh, connects us to two squares. This one goes to Hewitt Square on one side which would be nice. I wouldn't mind having a little house here, a very, very cozy little square. And then as we go down from the bridge uh, down to the lower town, uh, we see we have lots of steps going down to the lower town. This was the original town and the oldest buildings in Sibiu are down here, 13th century. And Sibiu is still a walled city. One of the members of the club was um, had a child in a, a music program. So we attended with, with them and you know how children's music pro programs are, you know, the little dancers and nervously awaiting and um, you know, making sure the violin is tuned properly. Of course, you can see the, the steeple of the church. We passed by another theater, the Gong Theater on our way to the music school. And uh, you may know what instrument this is. It's a zamponia or a, a pan's pipe. And it is uh, native both to Romania and to the Andes mountains countries like Peru and Chile. I'm not sure if there's any connection, but they look very much alike. And I don't know uh, why that would be. Somebody wants to research that, I'd love to know. And the little girls with their violins, reception later we see Teresa. <clears throat> and the little girls waiting to go on. So we had our, our walk through and this wasn't all pedestrian in this part of town, but still a very walkable town. Everything's pretty close in. This is the house of the Cariated. I'm not sure I can pronounce it either. Cariated, is that right? Uh, which we see also on the Greek Parthenon. And the small square. Here is our Romanian Orthodox Church. And of course, if you're looking at Romania and you look up and you can see the beautiful uh, paintings they have and domes and the different saints from 1906. The Jesuit church, another Catholic church. There's also a synagogue, which I don't have a picture of, unfortunately. Um, down in the lower town, we saw lots of interesting signs. Look at the, the roofing. This White House is late 16th century, one of the, the very early ones, and the oldest one, I'm not sure of the date on this, is the Blue House that we're looking at straight on. So I say it's also a fortified town, and um, they have rebuilt some of the towns. This one is Carpenter Tower, and you notice that it's uh, not completely round on the top, it's octagonal. We see just this, if I had realized the significance of that, I might have taken that picture a little differently, but I didn't at the time. So uh, th this part in between has been restored. The tower on the other end is a regular size tower, a regular shaped tower. But this would have been part of the fortifications of Sibiu back in the 14th century. One of the stops we made was to visit one of these group homes, as I was saying, uh, that, that were um, populated now by children from the orphanages. And we brought them some gift t-shirts. So there they are in their t-shirts. They don't look real happy with our choice. I don't know about that. 
this is where uh, Teresa and I were uh, stayed with the Motorneas, uh, Vera and Tony. Tony was the coordinator for the Sibiu Club. Uh, Vera's guard, Rose Garden and her dining room, though we never sat in her dining room, we always sat out on the porch. And it was a nice place to be in the summertime, particularly in some of their extended family. And what dinner would like look like. Uh, a lot of meat for me, that was not so good. I had a lot of pizza in uh, Romania. I guess that was the only thing they thought vegetarians could eat. But um, the other thing that's not on the table that surprises me is polenta because we had polenta, I think every, every meal, maybe even breakfast. Uh, polenta is very popular. It's a corn, like a corn mush uh, baked. One of the nice things to see in Sibiu is the Ostra um, National Museum of Folk Civilization, or we might call it an outdoor museum. We have one at Heritage Park and, and lots of towns have them where you collect your buildings to show your heritage. Founded in 1963, set in a nice big area. It's one of the nicest ones in Europe. Uh, it does have uh, a lot of things, a lot of buildings and crafts and tools that show how Romanians lived, particularly the peasant or the country people to preserve their uh, folk culture. That steeple that we just saw the church a minute ago and one of the statues in the park. So it's this collection of buildings from all over Romania that have been collected. Uh, so this one unpainted, um, but other things too, water wheels, um, all kinds of tools, as we said, like uh, spinning tools for, for making wool here, they're carding, uh, spinning the wool, uh, some of the brushes that would comb out some of the impurities. This one would have been a log cabin. You see it's um, uh, put together on the ends and then uh, plastered over, over 400 buildings in all. And of course you will see the uh, horse and buggy here. We did see horse and wagons, which we'll see later on actually still in use. A number of different types of buildings all through. Often you see them painted blue. This is one of the thatch designs. And I'm not sure about the blue. I've seen in other countries that, that blue is supposed to be a lucky color or keeps away spirits. And I did never come across why the Romanians like them blue, but you see quite a few blue buildings. And they're all open to go in. You can see uh, what a house would look like inside if you happen to live there. <clears throat> Again, these beautiful painted um, pottery. Now that one's really blue. Again, a different kind of roof. Nice little lake. And these two pictures are from some of their literature showing some of the people who are volunteers at this center, some of the, the food that they make, the different types of uh, dress that would be worn in different areas of the country. And I do have some of the Romanian painted eggs. I did bring back those. So here is, here is uh, all of Romania, Transylvania being the largest one. So we're now going to go from Sibiu, we're in Brasov, Sibiu. Some of the side trips around, around um, Sibiu. So here's where we're gonna go first to, to Sigishwara, Birtan Medias, Mediash, I should say. Uh, uh, we, we did separate days to Alba Giulia and to the um, Saxon villages. The so Sigishwara is another one that's a medieval town, walled town set up on top of a hill with another hill on top of that. And the name uh, comes from the Hungarian Segisvar, where var means fort. So it was a fort, it was fortified, has very thick walls around it. And the various guilds <clears throat> were responsible for building these different gates into the city and maintaining them. So this one was from, built by the Tailors Guild. <coughs> <clears throat> I have a list of some of these guilds if you're interested in them. <laughs> I didn't post them all. So this one was done by the tailors. And our upper town square was called the Museum Square, but still had a um, dirt floor, dirt, dirt uh, 
non-paved square. Most of the streets were not paved. We saw some being paved, so they were coming into this century. So uh, this is the house of Vlad Dracul, who was Vlad the Impaler's father, who was exiled here at one point. You notice on the wall, it said that this was his home. <clears throat> Another gate, I'm not sure which guild built this one. Here's one of the streets that's getting some street paving. It seems like 2009 is a little bit late in the game to be paving your streets, but oh well, I guess they're getting to it. See the dirt, dirt road? I guess the, the water just runs down when it rains. So this is uh, one of the other towers, the clock tower, which is a, a very famous one. It's at the end of the street and has a gate through it, which leads now down into the lower city below it. But this is now a museum and you can go up into the top of it. These uh, are what, what it looks like at the top of the, of the clock tower. <clears throat> so it's one of the few fortified towns that's still inhabited. Most of these are like Harman and others were are abandoned. They're, they're not, there's not anybody living there anymore. So the clock tower, as I say, was built uh, as a, is now a museum, was built as a watchtower and there, it's along the walls. So we did a little um, look into the tower, into the tower museum itself, and then also went down into the lower town. So we're going to take a look first um, from the top of the tower. And you see the walls going to the next tower. Now the view of the countryside. And if you look up, you're going to see one of two buildings. You can only see one of them in this picture. This is the school. So if you went to high school, this is where you went to school. Uh, again, one of the towers along the wall. Here's the wall. This is the other one. This is the church on top. View of the lower town. And here we are walking in the lower town. Now this one they paved with uh, stone already. More of the eyes in the roofs. So we did go up to the 187 steps up to the top of the, the uh, hill to see the church and the school and the cemetery on top of the hill. Leaving Sigishwar, we went to Birtan, which is another um, walled city, fortified church. Well, not a city, but a fortified church. Nice walls on this also, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it has a couple of different towers on it as well, built uh, in, in stages from the 14 to 1600s, and has a nice church in it. Um, Greek, uh, Romanian Orthodox. I don't know why I have Greek on my mind today. Romanian Orthodox Church. <clears throat> One of the headstones. And there's a museum now in this building that show life from that, uh, that part of the world. Now this stove is not fared too well compared to the ones at Braun. And again, a nice view because it would be at the top of a hill, of course. Medias city, uh, is a city, uh, but it was also a fortified city. So in 1810, you get an idea of what this might have looked like with, with walls around it. This church is still there and you can see it from all over. Beautiful roof designs. So our next day was spent at the Saxon villages, which are along this road here. The Saxon villages were settled by, guess what? People from Saxony in Germany. So they still mostly still speak German. And they, they remind me more of our Amish or Mennonites. They, they are uh, farmers, they are uh, country folk. Uh, they have a church, but very few people go to church. The streets look a lot like this. They're boarded up pretty much or, 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 or um, close to the street. 
and you would go through a gate to an inner courtyard. And you'll see people with horses, uh, wagons, bicycles, as well as cars. This is the uh, citadel of uh, Kalnik. And this is a little, um, I don't know, drawing, I guess you'd call a drawing of it. It had walls, it had double walls, and also a moat around it. And it was also a historic monument. So we uh, had, had a little look at that, built in 1271, added on various times. First as a private residence, it was out in the boonies to begin with and needed some fortification. You never know who is going to drop by and decide that they, that they wanted what you had. So it did have a moat and you could pull up the drawbridge and stay safe. Not bad though, I guess it's still standing after hundreds of years. Lots of storage for um, <clears throat> being prepared. Christian was another little town. You see this was the bus stop into Sibiu and the, the times the bus ran except for what's missing here. There was a Saxon church, um, Romanian Orthodox in Christian, but the little lady who took care of the church um, did not speak English. She, she spoke German and one of our uh, people could uh, interpret for us, but told us about that hardly anyone came to church anymore. There are only a few. Founded by, by German settlers and still um, still in a German-speaking town. Some of the Saxon decorations. And this was the only, only stork we saw on our trip with the stork nest on top of the uh, tower. The last one we went to was Sibio. This is the well, the village well. About 450 people. It's just firewood, it looks like, that they're hauling. This has a very nice icon museum. I think it can painted the light blue. These would be from the various churches. As we said, the icons were um, seen in all of the Orthodox churches, the various saints and religious pictures, scenes from the Bible. But very, uh, very flat um, style, <clears throat> almost like prints. This looks like King Carol. And also some of the clothes that would have been worn in that area. There's someone drawing water from the well and the horse uh, taking his share on one end. And grandpa. Alba Julia. It's with an I-U-L-I-A, but it's pronounced Julia, apparently. Uh, this is, oh, let me come back to that one. I missed it. Okay, it, it was named Julia, Jula, or White, which is a Hungarian name, or White City of Julius, being Ju the Roman Emperor Julius. Uh, Alba, Ju uh, Alba, being white, Alba Julia, was the Catholic Church was built there in the 12th, 12th and 13th centuries and the statues and entrance to that. But what it is really known for is, is that it, it is, is the seat of the Romanian Orthodox Church. And they have a compound there. This is the gate going into that compound. As you go through the gate, this is what you would see, the uh, Orthodox Church looking very much like other Orthodox churches that we've seen before. <clears throat> And again, we look up above the doorway and we see the gold and um, lovely pictures. It's also the seat of the Orthodox Seminary, which is surrounding the colonnade uh, inside the uh, walls of the, the courtyard. The town is also known for this Roman um, fort that was built there on, on, with seven pointed stars so that they had uh, cannons mounted out or whatever kind of <laughs> fortifications they had uh, back in those days. And it protected the uh, center of the city, which was the cathedral, the university, and their, their uh, Roman camp. 
the bastion itself or this part of it was built a little bit later. It was from Roman times, but then added on to uh, later. This is an aerial view of it. You still see it, the walls are still there uh, from the 1700s. And lovely, the uh, ornate gate. There are a couple of gates to it. And these walls are about five feet thick. They do have a changing of the guard, which we saw at one point. All decorate, all uh, dressed up in their guard costumes, the guard details. You see uh, how thick these walls are. <clears throat> and just leaving that area. So we ended up with our farewell party. Of course, everybody has fun. Everybody says goodbye. Um, our coordinators were Tony, our host, and Teresa. Um, Ed Edgren was the one who had started these two clubs in Romania and did not come on this trip. He'd been back once before that. Uh, but he made all the arrangements for it, so he was actually the coordinator of the trip, but did not actually go himself on the trip. Uh, that turned out to be then Teresa. So here are a couple of pictures of people with hosts. And I'm sorry that I don't have all the names of these. I'm really remiss in this. Linda and Marty with their hosts. Marty, you can tell me when we get off what your host name was, if you remember. got red eyes and those. And I don't remember Barbara and Georgette, where they, which club they were from uh, joining us. I'm sorry, these two ladies uh, joining us with their hosts <clears throat> and then our hosts. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, trip to Romania. It's one of the underestimated destinations in Europe, I think. Um, because it, it really hasn't made a name for itself over the years because it's always belonged to somebody else. It was in transition so much of the time, but it has a rich history and beautiful things to see, beautiful history, um, uh, beautiful uh, little towns and um, lovely people. So I hope if you've not ever been there that you will put that on your bucket list as some place to go. So thanks for coming. Awesome. You have awesome. questions for Mary? Unmute yourself and ask away. Um, I have. Um, uh, this is Marty. I have some um, some addendum to what Mary. Some of what Mary said. Um, my hostess was Olia, and I've actually been back to visit her uh, four sure. times, and she's been to the United States twice uh, right. since that trip. Um, Ulia uh, Opruto. Uh, one thing uh, you showed Ceausescu's palace and Ceausescu. Her husband was the uh, general in charge of the Romanian Air Force. He's he's I never met him. He's been dead for many years. But um, he was the one who ordered the helicopter that took Ceausescu off to his imminent de demise. Yes. yes. Um, the uh, just one thing I want to say about the balcony of that palace. There were two Frenchmen on the tour that we were taking. And um, I was standing next to them and our guide, we got out onto this balcony and the, and the guide said, this is our Champs-Élysées of Bucharest. And I asked these two Frenchmen what they thought of that and they just rolled their eyes. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> it was obviously nothing like the Champs-Élysées. Uh, one of the things that happened when they tore, they had to tear down all these houses to build that. And um, when they moved the people out, they left their dogs. And so there are still today packs of dogs that roam around Bucharest. And so you have to be really careful that you don't get you know, involved with them. Um, I took some photos in Pelish. You had to pay to take pictures in the castles. Yeah. And I paid at Pelish, yeah. though I have some pictures from that. Um, and one of the things I wanted to say, we went into the black church in Brasov and one of the things that um, that I don't know, different groups would give them gifts. And so they had lots of prayer rugs in there, Muslim prayer rugs, which I thought was really interesting, but they were gifts from mm -hmm. um, Muslim uh, communities. And so that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And then one thing I wanted to correct you on, Mary, um, in the um, church, the fortress churches, they were, they were Lutheran, they were Evangelish. 
um, because they were all Saxons. They were not Orthodox churches um, in the in Berchan and Emidiish. Yes, um, yes, I yeah. knew that about those. Um, I think um, the Saxon churches, I think, were the ones that were Orthodox. No, no, the Saxons were all Lutheran. Oh, yeah. well, they, were, they were Saxons because they were German. They, they were. They were. I remember reading. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, uh, the um, that Evangelist Church. It's pronounced Evangelist. It's not Evangelical. The Evangelist Church in in um, in Sibiu is a cathedral. It's um, mm -hmm. the, one of the head churches of the country. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so and and then the other thing is my uh, hostess Ulia. Her great uncle was uh, a metropolitan of the. Um, Orthodox Church. And as a result, she could never raise very high in the hierarchy when it was communist because she had a rel close relative that was uh, high up in the Orthodox Church. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And in one of the, um, in the courtyard across from the church, there's a statue of him. I actually have a picture of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then finally, the picture I have behind me is of that great square at Christmas time, they projected uh, scenes on all those buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they had a big Christmas market in the square. It was really, really interesting. Yeah. I was there another time when they had a pottery market in that square. It was huge square, was full of, of pottery um, things. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. Oh, thank you. A very good presentation. You, you brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> Well, they were for me too. I, I'm glad you mentioned about Tutescu uh, and his downfall. Uh, 1989, if I remember correctly, um, he was um, stormed. I mean, th there was a huge mob. I mean, everybody was against him. He was a communist leader. They, they wanted him out. And uh, he, was, he and his wife were airlifted by helicopter out of there, but the army was still able to capture him. And uh, he was tried and they were shot by firing squad on Christmas day of, of 1989. Um, my host Marius was part of that student um, led, I guess, mob that stormed him that night. So uh, he came to no good at the end. When the Romanians were here, uh, we got to go to one of the Romanian church services. Mm -hmm. Uh, we took them to we took them to Arlington, and then the Arlington people took them on. They went on to, to Oklahoma from us, and uh, mm -hmm. Roshoff and Sibiu did a. There were several people who came here from there. Mm -hmm. In between, in between our two trips there. Yeah. Mary, I have a question. You said the Romanian Orthodox. They have the Georgian Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox. You said something about the hierarchy. What about their beliefs? Are they basically the same with all those Orthodox? Yeah, they do. It's the same. They broke off from the Catholic, the Western Catholic Church. Okay. So they're basically Catholic, but they're the Eastern style of it. But each country has its own hierarchy of bishops and so forth. So it's, it's just a hierarchy of bishops. Yeah, okay. it's just administrative, but the, the beliefs are the same. Beliefs are the same. Yeah. Services you. would be very similar. The churches would be very similar. Well, Mary, I'm Thornton. I, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, my wife and I had scheduled a uh, European uh, capital trip uh, this past May, and uh, obviously we didn't go. And uh, then we left it in. We were going to go in May. We're going to drop it now because it doesn't look like uh, we'll be able to see all the major cities that we wanted to see. But uh, I enjoyed your presentation, and I actually I had not even looked at Romania. Yeah, most people don't. It's kind yeah. of forgotten, but I, I would definitely uh, put it on anybody's list if they're still missing a, a nice place to travel. It's a very interesting country, very pretty. Do you know, how, do how they still have, we, excuse me, do I they still have a, Go ahead, Thornton. Okay, do they still have a Friendship Force club there? Yes, in, in Sibiu, yes, and there's a small one now in Bucharest. Uh, okay. Bucharest yeah. was they have places where Ed had contacts, but they never managed to get a club but I think there is one there now, but I think it's under 10 people. So I don't know that there's home hosting, but there are a few people that would meet with you. I think it's- What's the population of Seaview? Um, can I look it up? <laughs> I want to say about 250,000. Yeah, okay. right. While she's looking it up, I was in um, Romania two years ago right. uh, with a Friendship Force trip building for, yeah. for uh, 
Um, and um, yes, Bucharest has a club, a friendship sports club, but it is tiny. Yeah. And yeah. we were not, they were not, a, they did not home host. We stayed in a hotel. I'm not sure. I think the reason for not being able to home host is A, the quality of the accommodations were probably not quite, uh, they didn't have accommodations for us. And also, there were just so few of them that yeah. they wouldn't have been able to accommodate all of us. We were we were a group of about fourteen or fifteen people. We were not a very big group, but they yeah. would not. But they were lovely people. Lovely people. Mm -hmm. okay. I Thank highly you. recommend going there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. Thank you, Mary. It was very good. Yes. Yes. So,